Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video about something a little bit different. This is a Radio Link T16D, a 16 channel fully proportional radio system that comes with a load of its own receivers as you would expect. However, this one I ordered from Amazon. They're not particularly expensive, which is nice. But the thing that really caught my eye on this is that it supports CRSF based modules, both things like Express LRS and also things like Crossfire 2. Now, why do I think that's important? Well, the modern hobby in the open source part anyway has pretty much transitioned to Express LRS as the default protocol for all of the stuff that is being sold as ready to fly, bind and fly. And the fact that it's not owned by any one vendor means that you can buy the radios and receivers from whoever you want. Now, until now, to be able to access and use something like Express LRS, you needed an Edge TX powered radio or Open TX, but most of us, let's face it, are using Edge TX at this point. And the Edge TX operating system for lots of pilots is just too blooming complicated. And I get that all the time with people getting in touch in the videos that I make, just struggling to do very basic things. Now I have loads of videos about that, but lots of pilots go to things like the FreeSky system because the interface is so much easier. And this is one of the first radios that I've seen that not only kind of supports its own receivers, we'll take a closer look in this in a minute. This has some very cute features. That's a USB port at the side for updates, for example, but it also via the mini bay at the back actually supports things like Crossfire and also things like Express LRS. And that's built into the menu system. And I absolutely love that. I think that's such a great idea. So before we get too far into this, let me unbox it and give you a whistle stop tour of the specs. It has 16 fully proportional channels, four kilometers control distance claimed, three millisecond response, supports Express LRS, Crossfire, and other mainstream long range modules. It's designed to work with lots of different receiver types. So aircraft, ground vehicles, boats, whatever you want. Running the free RTOS system, plus the LVGL GUI user interface, which is actually, I'll show you in a minute, very, very easy to navigate around. Multiple language support. The receiver supports the upgrade online via the USB port at the side. Real-time latitude and longitude distance heading and other information over telemetry. Has a simulator function with a port on the top. Trainer function and also reverse polarity protection in case you connect the battery in the wrong way. You can see it's supplied here, ready for AA batteries, but you can use a 2 or 3S LiPo battery in the back as long as it has that kind of GST power connector. So let me just turn it on and give you a quick look at how this thing actually works. So the interface itself is much more like a typical standard radio that isn't Edge TX. And by pressing mode, you can actually go from the general settings, which will give you the ability to monitor or reverse channels, set your endpoints, set the channel speed, set what the auxiliary channels do, play with your trims, the program mix, what the switch audio does, the sensor bits and pieces. You can also then go into your advanced settings for your model type. So you can change the type, flight modes, the conditions, rates and curves, throttle curves, set up your throttle hold and VTOL configuration. Then you've also got your transmitter settings. So you can change your model settings, system settings, your stick mode. By default, this has come as mode two. I'll go through all the switches in a moment. How you set to train it up, timers, switch settings, boot settings, theme settings, and about. And then finally, you've got your receiver settings. And this is where I get a little bit excited about this because in RF settings, you can either have it set for internal, in which case it's gonna support the standard FHSS version one, version two, and version 2.1 that you're gonna need for these standard type of receivers. Wide compatibility with this. Obviously, you've got all the things like the RAFG, RAFGH, and others as well. Um, there's a whole list on there that this is compatible with if you just wanna plug in PWM stuff. Nicely, the receivers do output SBUS as well, as well as have telemetry functions too, which is fantastic. But the thing I'm interested in showing you is that if we go into external, we have the protocols available for Express LRS or CRSF V2, which is basically Crossfire. We go into Express LRS, 
and then going to change the parameter, it's basically running a version of the Express LRS Lua script here. Now, of course, it's not going to populate because sadly I don't have an adapter to take it from this smaller bay at the back up to the larger bay. But I think that's fantastic. It means that you no longer have to have all that edge TX complexity in order to get Express LRS to work. So let me just turn this off and show you what the switch layout is. I actually really like the switch layout on this as well. Uh, Radio Master, if you're watching this, uh, put this many switches on your stuff because that's what we need as aircraft pilots. So let's go through the actual top. Here on the left hand side, we have the USB cable. We have the simulator trainer out, which is the standard three and a half millimeter jack. We have two position switch and a moment tree at the back. Then both of these are three position switches, which are great. We have two two position switches three more three position switches, two rotary controls, sadly without a detent, and we have the trims in the usual places. Apart from that, we have two um, sliders here, and both of those have a nice spring-loaded central detent. So for most pilots, that's going to be easily enough for the standard stuff that you're going to fly around with. Now there are lots of things that I like about this, particularly for the money. Okay, it does feel a little bit plasticky, but then you'd kind of expect that for this kind of cache. It doesn't feel too terrible, it actually feels decent. The gimbals in my thing actually feel a little bit lightweight, but that's, again, a slightly personal thing. It is very easy to navigate your way around the menus here compared to things like Edge TX. And for those of you coming from another system, this is gonna feel very, very, standard in the way that it's all laid out and a little bit more intuitive than trying to figure out how everything hangs together in Edge TX. Lots and lots of switches here. Um, I wish that other open source radios had this many. This has eight switches. I would still like to have all the ones at the front be three position, but hey, that's just me. But I like the fact that this this many, so if you have landing gear, if you have flaps, different flight modes, return to home, if you're trying to uh, manage things like LED control and those kind of things, you're not gonna run out of switches too quickly. I love the fact that they have a USB port on the receiver. I wish more um, of the receivers that we used in the hobby had that kind of functionality. No FTDI adapter, no funky cable, no connecting over Wi-Fi or something else that may may not work. You just plug it into your computer and you can download and flash it with the latest and greatest version. SBUS out as well, which is fantastic, as well as up to 16 channels on something like this, which would support even really complicated models, as well as having things like access to voltage telemetry too. But of course, the big thing for me is the fact that it supports things like Express LRS. I think that is a bit of a game changer. And I know we use that kind of term in YouTube land far too often, but I love the fact that I could actually, once I've got an adapter, plug Express LRS in the back of here and use Express LRS without having all the complexity of Edge TX. Only a couple of things to be aware of. Obviously, compatibility with the latest versions of Express LRS and stuff is kind of probably dependent on you keeping the firmware in this radio updated so it works. And personally, I would have preferred a full-size JR bay rather than this thing at the back, just because all the stuff that I have here is full-size JR. So unfortunately, I can't just plug that in. I might order myself um, an adapter and have a bit of a play. So in summary, this little radio has actually surprised me. Uh, this isn't gonna break the bank, so it's probably gonna be easy for those of you that wanna try the hobby out. Um, obviously it has lots of its own receivers that you can buy and bind to, but then you can get yourself, along with an adapter, or get the right module that's gonna fit on the back, your Express LRS, or even something like a Crossfire system as well. You're not just locked into their own receiver types, you can access all of the goodness that's out there. But HTX is still the king in terms of compatibility and feature richness for radio control radios. But if you'd want to play with Express LRS and don't want to have to learn all that and watch 27 different YouTube videos, this might be a slightly easier option for you. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payment360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.